Here's a look at the camera with a picture-in-picture -picture mode. This is my Chevy 350. You can really see how the coolant is flowing through the radiator. You can see the exhaust manifold. You can see the thermostat when it opens up. I have this cylinder unplugged, so you can hopefully kind of tell that it's a little bit cooler. Hi, right, John. It's James, Quantum Mechanic. Today we're talking about this uh, Thermal Master thermal camera that attaches to your phone. This thing is absolutely fantastic. Here's some details on it if you guys want to check it out. Um, I've been looking for a thermal camera for a while. Just going to do a quick little like light unboxing for you. Um, anyway, I've been looking for a good thermal camera for a while, but the problem is that they're all very, very expensive. Uh, my history with thermal cameras is that in the Navy, we used what's called a Nifty or a Naval Firefighting Thermal Imager, and we used it for fighting fires. You can use it to see through smoke. It's very, very, very expensive. Very, very, very nice, though. Uh, obviously, you're using it to fight fires or on submarines. You need it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so I have a pretty good uh, amount of experience with that, using that. Um, and then as I got into the civilian world, I used the Fluke thermal imagers as well, usually for uh, checking out hot bearings or uh, looking up for electrical shorts or panel wiring and stuff like that. I mean, there's a there's a number of reasons you could use a thermal imager, and we'll go through that in a little bit. But I want to talk about this one specifically, okay? Uh, this one's meant for the iPhone because that's what I have, and it comes with an adapter because I have a, a USB-C. But this thing is absolutely tiny, okay? Check that out. And the refresh rate is phenomenal. Much, much better than the Fluke ones I've used in the past. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show some footage of me using it on my pickup. And, uh, and you'll see this thing, it just, it's, it's so good. It's, it's unbelievably good how, how small it is and how much it costs things. Pretty affordable. And um, so, anyway, yeah, it's, I, 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 you know, it's meant for the iPhone, so it has the lightning adapter. And uh, it comes with this little USB-C adapter. So it does stick it off of the phone a little bit, and you know, a little bit too far for my opinion. But, I mean, it works. And there's a cable in here as well if you wanted to to use a cable to route it up some different way. That's, I mean, obviously that works. And, uh, and anyway, this thing is, the app for it is fantastic. I'll, I'll walk you guys through that as well. A lot of screen, a lot of screen recording I'll do for this. Uh, but anyway, this right here, and this is the macro lens right here. The macro lens really is meant for for very, very close-up you know things i have i have a picture a still picture i'll show you guys on that but but this is really good i i've had it for almost a week now and i've used it for a ton of things uh diagnostic uh, uh diagnosing misfires you know this is a huge one especially if the vehicle has accessible headers you can really see where the exhaust on a vehicle just isn't exhausting right because there's no spark so that's a really good one a really good way to use it that's that's um Another one is electrical shorts. I've used this for parasitic draw test. I kind of, I have my own method of, of finding parasitic draws that I'm really used to. Uh, you know, I haven't really incorporated this into my everyday use, but I found the parasitic draw and then I decided to use this kind of as a way to just like check it out really um, to, to test it and play with it. And sure enough, it, it, it would have found the parasitic draw. I don't know faster than I found it, but it definitely found it in a good timely manner. Now this right here for me is going to live in my a, a little bitty toolbox here. Okay. Uh, because it is so small, it'll definitely fit right there. And that's where it's going to live. All right. So let's talk about when this thing would actually be useful for you. Uh, I have it broken down into a couple of sections. So obviously automotive technician, that's where I like to live and breathe, but I have uh, worked in the industrial complex as a maintenance manager previously, uh, and then also personal use too. So, so we'll kind of break it down a little bit. So diagnostics is a big one for uh, automotive industry. Diagnosing misfires we talked about, electrical draw, parasitic draw. You can actually see coolant through the radiator as well. It's, um, if you think you have a block in the radiator or not enough flow through the system or a bad water pump or something, you've exhausted a bunch of efforts. Hey, check out, see if there's actually flow through the cool, through the um, radiator. That's a really good one. Stuck calipers. Uh, let's say uh, you want to see are the calipers sticking. It, there's a lot of obvious ways to check, but temperature is a really good one too. Uh, you do a drivability test on the vehicle, lift it up, take both tires off, and if one tire or one brake rotor is significantly hotter than the other one, then there's a likely chance there's a stuck rotor. Uh, wheel bearings as well. Do the exact same thing. Do a drivability test. If you can't really tell by uh, moving the tire back and forth, you could check the temperature of the wheel bearing. 
and then also procedural. There's a, lo a lot of times when you're doing something where it'll tell you, um, ensure that temperature is within a certain range, whether it be an oil temperature or uh, the temperature of the heads or whatever the case may be. You can use this right here to kind of check those temperatures for you to make sure they're within specification, okay? So, I mean, those are just a handful of things. I'm sure there's more that I'm not thinking about, uh, but that's kind of what I've used it for in the last week. Now, industrial commercial, this I have to have a lot of experience in. I used to use a Fluke thermal imager, and I'll tell you, this is I think this is actually better than those Fluke thermal imagers that I used to use, mainly because the refresh rate on this thing is absolutely fantastic. It is amazing. Um, it doesn't auto calibrate. It's not constantly hanging up on an image. Uh, it just it just seems to work really, really, really well. So let's say you're an industrial mechanic uh, or industrial maintenance or something like that. I need to check the, the temperature of a pillow block bearing or a flange bearing. Um, this is a fantastic way to do it. If you've already greased the bearing or if you need to grease the bearing or if you're, if you're a supervisor and you want to see if the bearing's been greased or anything like that. Or, hey, maybe we just have a hot bearing and you want to see which bearing is it. Maybe there's it's hard to get to because of rotating equipment. You don't want to cause downtime by uh, accessing the area and putting a temperature probe on it or something like that. This will do it, and it can do it remotely, and you have a really good range on how far it can it can actually see that temperature. So that's really good. Uh, another one is flowing a pipe. It's kind of like coolant flow here, but flowing a pipe. Let's say you're not sure if you're getting flow through a pipe, and you don't have an ultrasonic detector, you don't have a flow meter in the pipe or something like that, and you need to determine if uh, maybe you, you're the. Um, the pump is too far away and the valve is too far away. You don't want to go all the way there to see if the pump and valve is open. And you can just check flow this way if there's a difference in temperature within the, within the piping. So that's a really good one as well. I've come across fans that are spinning at very, 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 very high speed. And um, you want to check the bearings on those fans while they're moving. And there's really no way to get in there. Uh, this is another really good tool to use for that. Let's say you need to check, uh, you need to do different temperature calculations to determine flow in a system. Let's say you're an engineer or something like that, and you just want to see the flow gradient or the temperature gradients through something and uh, for your plug it into your Bernoulli's calculation or mass flow rate calculation or whatever, this will this will do it for you. Uh, electricians can use this as well. A flow of electricity is a huge one. Let's say you're not sure exactly where uh, conduits uh, routed through or piping is routed through a conduit or through a wall or something like that. This can save you so much time rather than trying to trace a dead leg of pipe or using two guys, one guy to mega one end of the pipe and the other guy, or one guy to mega one end of the wire and the other guy to check voltage on the other end and communication, you know, industrial environments are very loud. So another, just a huge, huge time saver with something like this when you're trying to find the wiring on a 50 year old wiring um, diagram that doesn't exist, right? Uh, breaker panels as well. Let's say you need to open up a breaker panel and you need to see if the, if the, breaker is shut and there's a ton of current going through it, you can compare that to all the other shut breakers as well, or even if the breaker just opened up. So let's say you're not sure what breaker is stripping because none of them are labeled, you can actually take this and break it to the panel, take a before and after picture, and you can kind of see which panel has tripped open and which one has lost the floor current. And you'll see it cooling down on one side and on the other. So that's kind of neat as well. Uh, let's say you're looking for water leaks through drywall. Okay, you need to, you, you have a leak somewhere on the second floor, it's coming down, you don't know where it's coming down from. This is a really good way you can see those cold spots in the wall. Um, huge time saver, especially if the drywall isn't quite spongy yet, or maybe it's stucco or concrete or something like that, and you have a leak behind it. This will, this is just a really good way to find that as well. Uh, also, like I said, heavy current draw. Okay, let's say you're in a house and, and you're, and you just want to see, hey, my electricity bill's been really high and I'm not too sure why. And you have a handyman come out and check it out. He can use this to check your appliances to see which appliances are pulling uh, more current. Uh, obviously, it's, it's, um, it's not perfect, but you can use this as a temperature gradient. And then you can obviously put his uh, amp meter on there to see what it's getting as well. And then I've also been in conditions where visibility is poor, very, very, very poor. Kind of like I was talking about in the beginning with the Nifty for firefighting uh, imaging. I, I wouldn't recommend use this for firefighting. I mean, I'm really bad idea because it redundancies and all that good stuff. But anyway, let's say you just need to get more clarity into to like a dark environment or a smoky environment, or there's a lot of fly ash or something like that. And you just can't see it's a lot of steam and you need to kind of cut through that. Uh, this, this, this will help you with that as well. 
And then safety is another big one. Uh, anytime you talk about anyone in industrial complex, safety is a huge one. So let's say a uh, piece of equipment just got done. Uh, we just shut off a piece of equipment and we need to go inside of it. Well, you don't want to send your guys into it when it's too hot, right? Uh, and sometimes it's a confined space. So you don't want to do all the effort of entering a confined space just to find out that it's too hot. And then you just wasted three or four people's time. And then you have to, you know, come back another time. It's just a pain in the ass. So you can use this to make sure that the area is actually cooled down enough for for guys to enter it. Uh, and that's just a really good one. You can see where hot spots are as well. Really, really great. Uh, and then another one is personal. So you can obviously use this for hunting. I mean, uh, going outside at night and looking for uh, animals and, and, and tracks. You can actually see tracks on the ground. It's fantastic. This thing is very sensitive. You, if you're walking around your house, I'll show you guys too. You can actually see your own footprints on the tile as you walk. It's, it, if you've been sitting down in a chair for a long period of time and get up, that chair will be hotter than all the other ones. Uh, so you can actually, even if, even if nothing is there and no one is there, you can use this to kind of collect some data, right? Uh, you can use it to, to find out what's been going on in a room even after you've been gone. And it's, it's just cool. It's really neat to, to whip this out and to, and to play around with it, even if you don't use it for work. I mean, I think it's, it's got an, numerous n reasons uh, to be used for work. But there's also a cool factor to it as well that you could use uh, just to whip it out and show it to your friends and kind of see, uh, you know, just you know all different kinds of things it's just a really cool tool very affordable i'll put a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out and uh yeah if you guys have any questions uh leave it in the comments below and uh thanks again for watching guys have a great one all right so here i just want to show you guys the engine of this crv uh, it's pitch black dark outside i'll turn this light off uh, so you really can't see nothing but with this camera set up in the thermal camera, this is the wife's phone. Took away her sole source of entertainment. And uh, you can really see the heat signatures in here pretty well. So if you can see the heater core back there. See those heater lines back there in the corner. Here we have a comparison of two vehicles. It just got dark, so the concrete's still kind of warm. But you see this car here on the left is cold. And this one here on the right is warm, right? And that one on the right there has been sitting for a couple hours now. So it's kind of kind of cool to see the difference in temperature of these. This camera's got a good bit of range too. So you can really tell, you know, that's a few blocks. I mean, that car just got parked right in front of me, right there. So, uh, yeah, but if we took a walk down the block, you'd be able to see all the cars that kind of just got parked and the ones that have been sitting for a while. Here we have my breaker panel box. And you can kind of see how hot it's getting. I'll show you guys this is a bucket, uh, like a trash can full of water from the last rain we had. And I'll show you the picture in picture functionality as well. Let me turn my light off. See, it's dark on this uh, picture here but if I turn the light on obviously you can see what's going on it's just a trash can with water in it um I don't know if you guys could tell but that's a damn airplane that is picking up on that's cooler than shit well, I was hoping to find one of those neighborhood cats that like to use my yard is their own personal shit litter box little mother truckers but anyway let me cycle through some of these different viewing angles for you the, the different uh filters they have they're all pretty much the same they just give you different uh you know different uh i don't know view but it's all the same they just i don't know how to explain it it's all the same uh, i prefer i prefer this guy right here Kind of what I'm used to seeing. But there's different options. So here we have my furnace just kicked on. Got an old school furnace. You'll be able to see it. Light up all the burners. It's the pilot right now. You see it's highlighting the hot spot, which is the flame. And there it is. Wow, look at that. Can't really see the flame too good on the camera. There it is, and you can really see what's drawing power. So those are the 
relays up there in the corner. And this is the heat pipe going up. See, that's progressively getting hotter. If we look at the rest of the house, you can see those are the vents where the heat's coming out. So you got some LED lights on this map here that's getting kind of warm too. See that? And you can actually see on the floor, you can see the footprints that I've been walking on. So kind of cool there too. 